morning to everyone. It's Betsy F. I'm one of our newer employees here at CNT Publishing. So if you don't recognize me, that is why I work here in customer care and do a lot with quilting. And I get to interview Mary Hertel today. I'm so excited to see you. How are you doing? Hi, Betsy. I'm great. Great. Well, Mary, you live in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, so it's still afternoon for you. For our California company, it's still in the morning. We are so excited for your new title here with your so cute baby animals. This is your sixth book with us, right? That's right. Yes. And what I love about this book and the animals in particular is how much they have that kind of kawaii-esque look with these big, large eyes, and they're just so cute. Can you show us some of your examples that you've got there? You bet I can. I've got about 17 different blocks in this book and the barn. <laughs> That's the only inanimate object in the book. But normally on my blocks, I would do buttons for eyes because I always try to keep my patterns really easy for my customers. Because this book is specifically for babies and nursery items, I made sure all the eyes on all of the animals are paper pieced in or they are stitched in with embroidery floss. So you can see on the cow and um, the zebra, because they're not just farm animals, they're from the zoo and all over, that the eyes are all paper pieced or like on the turtle, they would be stitched. Some of the blocks are in a square format like these, they measure about eight by eight unfinished and all the blocks are interchangeable in the book. So I can take all of these pictures and put them into any of the other projects that are in there. there are seven different projects you can make. Some of them are pictured here around me and all of them fit together. So you could actually make about 94, 95, 96 different items, different projects using this book. Now for something that I want that's longer, like this pony, what little girl wouldn't love this pony? And oh, I, no. I would put two of the eight by eight squares together. So still then all the patterns always fit on your printer. You can print everything at home. You don't have to go to any printing place to have things done because they're too large. So those are just a few of the blocks. Great. Well, I skipped ahead because I was so excited to talk about the blocks. Let's talk about where we can find some more resources because you have a really awesome website and I'm actually going to pop the link to that in the chat but it's called madebymarnie.com. Can you tell us why that um, is the name of your website? Yes. Um, I named myself Made by Marnie when I started my business about 10 years ago, which I didn't really know was going to become a business at the time. I had just retired from teaching and I loved sewing all my life. And I told myself I would take a little time off after I retired at the age of 55, but I decided within a month I was working in a quilt store. And then I started designing because I absolutely love to sketch. So I called my business made by Marnie. Marnie is my nickname. I just thought that as a tag name was a little more unusual than made by Mary, which is my given name. So that's where the Marnie comes from. It's a nickname. Okay, great. So, so you do go by Mary, but Marnie is just, you know, a little more fancy, yeah. a little more a little fancier, right? A little crappy. Okay. Well, I want to go back and talk a little bit about your, you were talking about your eight by eight blocks. I am not a foundation paper piece. <laughs> well, I had done some really simple things. Um, and I thought, well, this is a little more involved. There are a little more pieces but I'm gonna try it anyway. So I did the cat that's a little bit different um, than your colorway. And you taught me some interesting things when you saw this about maybe keeping more of a solid background and the di choosing different furs and that kind of thing. Um, do you wanna give us some tips on choosing fabric for your blocks? Sure. My choices were more like this. See that? Um, it's fine to use fabrics that read, um, they have a texture in them, but from a little bit of a distance, they read more as a solid. 
And I really suggest you use those types of fabrics when you're doing an image, especially a face. If you want to add something a little wild in there, like something real polka dotty or with swirls, you certainly can do that, but maybe that could just be one of the fabrics and then all the others should be a little more reading more solid so that you can really see the image. Because if you have busy, 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 busy all over, you're not going to see the image very well when you're finished. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. As someone who has lots of busy fabric, though, I had a hard time choosing. So now I know that I get to go fabric shopping specifically to make your animals. So you all yes. have, we're enabling you right now to go get more solid fabrics or more fabrics that read solid. Um, the right. other thing that I loved about your pattern when I was doing it, um, I had only done very, um, simple things so there weren't I had not done anything with lots of shapes like what's on this template but what I love is how you colorized the, this so that when you cut it up into your pieces you know which fabric you're wanting to put where can you talk a little bit about why you do that and your all your patterns are right are like this correct that's right um thanks Betsy what a nice compliment I'll show you the slot for instance this would be how the block looks in the book it the whole pattern is together when you get it. But there are red lines that show the difference between the different segments. Because in paper piecing, you're going to have to cut this pattern apart into segments. Segments are labeled with letters, A, B, C, and so forth. And then you take that segment A and paper piece it and paper piece segment B. And then you sew the two together and you keep climbing on that till the puzzle basically is put together. But what my patterns, because they're in color, it's so easy to see what type of fabric you can use. Of course, you can choose whatever fabric you want, but it gives you a nice direction. There's always a picture here of the finished, and it will be the opposite because you're actually building your pattern on the back. You're building your block on the back of the pattern, so it's always in reverse when you're finished. The pattern will also tell you how many copies to make. So for instance, for this sloth head, I would need to make three copies so that when I cut this out, I'm going to cut around each segment, adding a quarter inch seam allowance. So you have some seam allowance to put those segments together. So it'll say, make three copies. And then it'll also say, now um, you can cut like A and C out of one copy, cut B out of a second copy, cut D and E out of the third copy. So it gives you guidance right at the bottom of the pattern, tells you all of that to help you cut it out efficiently so you're not wasting too much paper. Yeah, let's and go back to this and um, I'll show you where she puts all that. So on the bottom of all her patterns, you see you've got the title of the block. And then you can't really see it on this screen, but it says directions. And for someone who is not always great at following a pattern, I totally forgot to read all that and didn't realize <laughs> that you tell us exactly how many copies to make. And when you talk about the letters that you sew together, you tell us, oh, you can cut A and C out of this copy and you can cut, I can't read it from here, but <laughs> you can probably tell us right off. Um, but yeah, so yeah. that helped. So you I can't read it either to... because I don't have my glasses on. But <laughs> it will be in parentheses and they're grouped together by which ones you cut out of each copy. Yeah, that was really super helpful. And also less confusing to have it on one page like this so that you could totally see how the block comes together versus sometimes when we have paper piecing patterns they're all split up and i feel like that's kind of hard to picture what your final product is going to be like so right and you would never of course cut up your original you always want to keep your original because it shows you then mm -hmm. how the pieces go all back together again and i popped a link for the book in the chat and we actually sell both a paper copy and an ebook and our ebook on our website comes in a pdf format which is how i used it so you can actually print these blocks directly on the, your favorite foundation paper piecing paper. Here we really like Carol Doak's foundation paper piecing paper, but there's lots of different options out there. Do you have a particular favorite? You don't have to say it's ours. 
I love Carol Doak's paper, however, because I do so much paper piecing every day. I go through a lot of paper. I get the cheapest copy paper I can, and I'm very happy with that. That's good to know. Good to know. It's always good if, to be on a budget, especially since we're a, all... Betsy, yeah. here's a tip, too. If people don't want to use up a lot of colored ink when they're printing off these copies, you can print it in black and white format and then just follow the original for your color choices. That works oh, too. That's Saves another money. great. Yeah. Oh, good tip. Awesome. I love that. Well, um, does anybody, we have some time left here. I think we've gotten through a lot of things. I do want to talk about how you mentioned that. So this block that I made, I made for my daughter, even though it's kind of busy. Um, and you mentioned that with these eight inch blocks, you can do other things. You said I could make a tote. So here's yes. another example of how all these blocks are interchangeable in these mm -hmm. different pro projects. So you have cute and clever, clever totes. You have a calendar, um, one that's like seasonal. You have farm animals, the one with the unicorn that's got just all kinds of mystical creatures in it. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. So I'm going to pop your author page in our chat. So if you guys want to check out all those other books that Mary has that you're going to love. And again, like what a bargain to get 96 different projects out of one author's collection of books. Like, I don't think we have another author that does that, that I know of. So that's really it was, cool. It was kind of my plan from the start that if you start out with just basic shapes and then they're all interchangeable, you can see that this could easily go into the tote to the catch-all they all fit together and then you can be more creative it's more yeah. fun yeah i love that you know we sophie asked a question in our chat here she says where did your inspiration come from i think i asked you a similar question when an author writes a book they have to be so passionate about the subject and this is your sixth foundation paper piecing book so what is it about foundation paper piecing that you just love what caught me right away, it was the hook, was that it's like a puzzle. I love doing word puzzles, any kind of puzzles, and putting them together, the pattern together. It's just like when you look at the pieces separately, you think that's not going to be a dog, and then you start putting it together, and it's like, oh, my gosh, magically it does become a cute little dog. So that really hooked me, and I, I do love that it looks a little more modern because um, we didn't talk too much about this either, but I do all my – my patterns, my sketches, their, their sketches, they're original. I don't use any computer programs. I don't work from photographs. I just sketch. And then I transform that into something that's in all straight lines. So it can be paper piece. And that kind of lends a more um, abstract and modern look to the project. And I just think it fits in really well with today's modern girl. Yeah, that still kind of blows my mind that you are able to think about and sketch all these various different shapes. And you have some of these round faces in your patterns right now, but they're not near as complicated to make that round shape the way that you would think they would and the way it is in some other foundation paper piecing. So for me, this was a great sort of intermediate step into that because you also find a way to do it simply, but still get the shape you want. I do hear that from my customers a lot, that my patterns are really easy. And you'll see that on my Etsy shop, there's so many comments from customers that they just thought it was so easy to put together. To go back to Sophie's question, I don't know if I ever answered it. I really am motivated to do animals, I think, because of my background in teaching elementary art and working with kids art for so many years. I worked for 35 years as a teacher. And that's probably where the motivation comes for all the animals. Oh, see, I didn't even put together. There. They are all animals, aren't they? <laughs> I do other things, too, because I've been I've been asked about that when I do lectures for quilt gills. They're like, OK, a lot of animals, but where are the flowers? So I have everything. I have over 500 patterns in my Etsy shop and you'll find everything there. And if you don't, you can email me and I'll work on it. Yes. And she Mary has her email. Let me take the question away so you can see. Mary Ann Hurtel or Hurdle, you say Hurdle, right? Hurdle mm -hmm. at gmail.com. Well, um, we can wait around for one or two more questions, but we're almost ready to wrap up. I do want to point out that you have a lot of really great tutorials on your website as well. So if you're new to paper piecing 
and you want to check out some of her videos on YouTube. Those are really fantastic. And we hope to have some in the future on our own platform from you. I think we've talked about that a little bit. Um, we did. I know this bib is going to be offered through CNT um, as a pattern that can be used to make the bib and to paper piece the chick. And I think it's going to be offered to shops so they can give classes on it. Yes, we do. Sometimes have class, um, uh, what's the lesson plans that we share for uh, quilt shops out there. So if you are a quilt shop owner and you want to do a class, um, first off, you travel sometimes a little bit and teach classes. I know you said you taught a, a lecture last night to a guild. Yes, and in August, I will be doing um, a couple of lectures and uh, workshops in Hayward, Wisconsin, and also in um, Jackson, Wisconsin, the second week in August. So just watch my, um, uh, my blog. I always advertise on there what's coming up. Well, great. Well, is there anything else you'd like to tell us that you're going to be up to before we get off of here and say goodbye? Yes, I just contracted for book number seven, which if I told you the subject matter, I would have to kill you. So <laughs> <laughs> that's under wraps. But that's what I'm working on this summer, book number seven, and always fun to start a new book. Congratulations. I don't even know your trade secret, so I'll be surprised and excited to find out what it is. Well, thank you so much for taking the time with us, Mary, today. And we are super excited about your book. Don't forget to check out the links that are in the chat right now. And if you're catching this on the replay, we will have them in the description for you as well. And thanks so much, Mary. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Betsy. Bye.